Welcome back to Weather Underground. They are lean, they are green. Some of the most popular cars on the road are electric, just like these ones, which were showcased at the Atlanta International Auto Show earlier this year. More and more big automakers are getting in the electric game, some up because it's government regulated. With several states and even the federal government offering tax rebates, you can get a good deal and really improve your bottom line. But is it really good for the globe? little naked earth for you tonight. We're tackling with Carl Parker. Vehicles designed and marketed to be earth friendly may actually not turn out to be that green, Carl. Yeah, it all depends on where you live. It depends on what state you're in. And we're going to talk all about that here in just a second. And one thing I also wanted to tell you about is something called embodied carbon. And that is the amount of carbon that it takes to manufacture a car. And it's a lot. When you think about it, they've got to mine the steel. They've got to get all these materials out of the ground. It's a long way from the shovel all the way to the car in the showroom. And so there's a lot of energy in that process. All right, you've got a lot of stats here. Kind yes. of run us through some of the numbers you have and what all, they mean. Alright, so this is very loose and you got to keep that in mind. It's just a loose idea of how things are working. Uh, this is from the EPA. That's 4.7 tons of CO2. That's the average use of CO2 per car per year. Okay. So going up to five years, it's 23.5, 10 years, 47, 15 years, 70.5. Now, if we assume that a hybrid on average is getting 50% better mileage, then we drop that value by a third, right, we get 3.1. Yeah, exactly. You're doing all right. Doing all right, and then we see these values going up through five and 10 and 15 years. Okay. Now, it takes about 6.5 tons of CO2 to make a standard car. And so if you buy a standard car every five years, you're adding that 6.5 every five years, you come up with a total in 15 years of 93 tons of CO2. This, this being how much it, it, it costs the environment to make that car and then how much you're emitting yes. any emissions from driving the vehicle. Exactly. Now, if you buy that car and it's 6.5 and you hold on to it for 15 years, then that value drops to 77 tons. So that's better if you're holding on to it for a long time. Now, if it's an EV car, an electric hybrid, uh, it's 7.5 on average, takes a little bit more to produce that car. If you buy a new one every five years, then you're at 76.5, so not a lot of difference right there. But then, if you buy that car and you hold on to it for 15 years, then you're down to 54 tons. So that really yeah. is the best thing that you can do for the environment. Buy a sipper and then hold on to it for a long time. That's a, that's not a bad, that's, and keep in mind that they just released the new stats that the average life of an American car right now is yes. 11 years, right? which is pretty solid, it's the highest it's ever been. Right, people are holding onto their cars. And, uh, and cars are getting better and better yes. gas mileage year after year after year, so that's a good sign too. Things are improving all the way around. Now, but if you could do zero emissions, it seems like there could be an advantage there. Yeah, you know, it, it really depends on where you are. And so where we see the most climate friendly uh, states for electric vehicles is in some parts of the Northeast and the Northwest. Then you've got sort of a mixed bag in several other states, but across most of the country, it's actually better to drive a Prius. So let's take a look at some individual states and I'll show you how this works. And what we're looking at is CO2 per mile on average here, looking at Indiana. So a Prius emits 0.52, the average US car emits 1.3, the Leaf is at 0.86, higher than the Prius, even though it's a fully electric car. Due to the fact that how you're charging your vehicle Exactly. Here. You're getting 80% of your power in Indiana from coal. So it's a dirty fuel. So this offsets any gain you may have from zero emissions out the tailpipe. You're, you're much better off driving a Prius in Indiana, in Kentucky, in West Virginia, in Wyoming, Colorado, same story here. The Leaf is worse off than the Prius, still better than the average US car, but not as good as the Prius. And then in Georgia, right around the same place, the Prius and Leaf are about the same because you get a mixture of uh, energy generation from nuclear, natural gas, and also from coal. Now we'll take a look at a few more states and show you what's going on here. Going into Illinois, uh, you've got a mixture here as well, uh, nuclear, natural gas, and so not too bad. So New York does better here. A little bit better. New York, it's actually a, a good bit better than the Prius, and that's because a lot of the energy comes from nuclear. Uh, look at Washington State here. They get most of their energy from hydropower. Pretty amazing, and so this is where it's an extremely efficient to drive a leaf. Now, the one thing that could blow this out of the water, one more graphic to show you, is residential solar. 
You get solar panels on your roof, and all of that is moved. Now you're good to go. Exactly. So we just put solar panels in everyone's roof, we can get an electric car. <laughs> uh, Carl, excellent stats. Thank you. Something we didn't know. Hey, stick around. Amazing images. We picture this. Coming up.